In today's video, we're gonna go over the best solo builds for beating Seven Star Mewtwo when this brand new event hits Scarlet and Violet early next month. So during the Pokemon Presents that we've had recently, we finally had the confirmation that this Seven Star Terror Raid event for Mewtwo will be coming to Scarlet and Violet. After all the rumors with the data mines recently, we knew this event was in the games, but we were just waiting on that confirmation and it will be coming to the games on the 1st of September. So there is a little bit of a wait until this event does drop, but there is a lot of things we can do to help us get prepared for when this seven star legendary Pokemon drops in the game. The event itself will be running from Friday the 1st of September at 1 a.m. British Standard Time. So convert that into your relevant time zone wherever you are in the world. And it will be running for two weeks, finishing up on Monday the 18th of September at 12.59 a.m. British Standard Time. And remember, once you have this terror event in your game as long as you don't go online after this finishing date which will be the 18th of September you'll be able to keep the Mewtwo in your game until the next time you do go online and after that terror raid event will disappear so there was some additional information with this terror raid event strong foes make powerful allies in the battle against Mewtwo prepare to face Mewtwo with the mightiest mark by participating in two terror raid battle events leading up to the appearance of this legendary Pokemon this is a perfect opportunity to catch some powerful for Pokemon and earn handsome rewards including experience candy for leveling up your Pokemon, items for improving your Pokemon stats and terror shots for changing your Pokemon's terror type. So these are the events that are going to be running in the run up to this Mewtwo terror raid event. We've got the first one currently running at the moment which is from Wednesday the 9th of August until the 18th of August and that will be featuring the Blissey and the scissor and hydreigon so this is aim for the attacker warm up to the strongest mewtwo event this is currently running at the moment and as of recording this video will be changing over later this evening to the next phase in preparation for this terror raid event you're going to be able to catch scissor hydreigon which are obviously two pokemon that are going to have good type matchups against mewtwo with their dark and bug type room respectively and also the Blissey Raid is returning in this Spotlight Terror Raid event. Get lots of XP candies, lots of useful items like carbos, things like that. And you're also going to have Terror Shards, which are going to be given out in abundance, particularly from those Blisseys. And then the next event that can be featured is going to be a show of supporters. The Pokemon that are going to be good going into the Mewtwo as a supporter Pokemon, they're going to feature five star raids for Blissey. will be returning in this one so you can gain more Terror Shards once again. Hatterene and Grimmsnarl as well. So that'll be running from Friday the 18th of August until the 1st of September. So until this Mewtwo 7 star terror raid goes live. And of course, from the 1st of September until the 18th, both of these raids will be running in conjunction with the seven star terror raid event for Mewtwo. So lots of these higher cost items, as well as the terror shards that will be very useful for changing your terror types. It is confirmed in this article as well that the Mewtwo can only be caught once per save file. So it is gonna be catchable in case any of you are wondering or worried about it not being catchable and you are gonna be able to re-battle it like we do with normal seven star terror raids. Once we've caught it or beat it the first time, you're gonna be able to regenerate the raids and go in and beat it and farm for those high cost items that I'm sure we're gonna get a lot of because it is a legendary Pokemon and a special seven star terror raid event. Okay, so having a quick overview of Mewtwo. So it is gonna have weaknesses to ghost, dark and bug type Pokemon. It will be hit additionally hard because of the psychic terror typing that it does have on there boosting its already strong stab or same type attack bonus psychic type attacks it will have 130 base speed so it's going to be very very fast and hard to outspeed and it will have that 30 times multiplier to its HP stat. So it will be around 10,590. And that's the amount of damage that you're gonna have to do to the Mewtwo to remove it from the field. Bear in mind, that will take a little bit longer once the shield goes up on the Mewtwo, but that's things that we can kind of delve into once we know how the Mewtwo raid operates when it does go live. Now the attacking options that Mewtwo is gonna have is definitely 100% gonna have Psy Strike. It is its signature psychic type attack but it works differently to most other special attacking moves a bit like size shock if you're familiar with that how size strike works it bases its attack power off your special attack 
but dictates the damage done based on the defensive stat of the target Pokemon rather than its special defensive stat like most other special attacking moves. And something you might have to keep in mind, if you've got specific Pokemon with a lower defense stat, you might want to invest some EVs in that if they are hit neutrally by psychic type attack so you can take this move a lot better. I can't imagine it's going to have psychic. It might do as a secondary option. It could have something like stored power as well. It does get access to an array of different psychic type attacks. But if it is just going to have one option, I would 100% say it's definitely going to have this side strike as an option. Shadow Ball is another option that I could definitely see Mewtwo running in this terror raid. It's going to give it good options against opposing psychic type Pokemon like Mew, for instance, that are going to come into this raid. And it is also one of those kind of signature attacks in the early anime episodes the movies and things like that you always see it using that shadow ball attack which is the main animation i at least always remember the Mew running so I can see shadow ball being on there as well it helps it out with its weaknesses that it's got especially against ghost types it gives it an option to hit those for super effective damage as well now aurora sphere is definitely something i could see me to running but i think i've changed my mind slightly on this and there is a question mark over it and why i have put a question mark next to it on this attack option list because I think when you look at that prepare the offense spotlight terror raid event that's running at the moment you look at the options that Pokemon are actually giving out to players the scissor and the high dragon as good options a good offensive options against the Mewtwo now you kind of question whether or not Game Freak are gonna say okay well use high dragon it's gonna be a good option against Mewtwo and then give Mewtwo Aurora Sphere to make it really difficult especially for those more casual players that aren't really interested in the strategic side of these seven star terror raid events I just feel like it kind of burns those players quite a bit and for that reason it makes me question whether or not Aurora Sphere will be on there and of course if it's not it does make it a lot easier and more accessible for a lot more Pokemon to come into this raid and have a lot more success against Mewtwo. Not saying it's not going to be there but there is a big question mark over it for me considering the spotlight terror raids that are running at the moment and what Pokemon are kind of suggesting with their Pokemon choices to go in against the Mewtwo with if you're not using the Mew. Dog Pulse is another option. It does give it good coverage against Ghost and opposing Psychic type Pokemon. So I could definitely see that potentially being an option. But like I say, I probably see more options like the Side Strike, the Shadow Ball and the Aurora Sphere over the Dog Pulse, but we can't discount it. Now it does get an absolutely array of great coverage moves from Mewtwo. Its move pool is super deep and it does get access to some of the strongest attacking moves in the game. Now I'm basing this off things that I would expect Mewtwo to have from previous generations from red blue and yellow when it first appeared in these games and i think this event is generally kind of celebrating that mewtwo first movie and that mewtwo from those generation one games where it kind of came from fire blast is an option again there's a question mark over it because of course scissor having that four times weakness to fire it does feel a little bit bad if you're suggesting size to be used then you give it fire blast and you kind of have no chance of beating mewtwo with a scissor from the get-go so that was another reason why i've got the question mark there blizzard is another option thunder is another option low accuracy attacks we've seen seven star terror raid pokemon running these high risk high reward moves a bunch in the past and i could see mewtwo running any number of these going into this raid as well giving it decent coverage against a lot of other options and then power gem is something else that i could see it potentially using gives it nice coverage against bug type pokemon as well outside of that fire blast now setup options has got a wealth of setup options as well i think amnesia is something that mewtwo is renowned for using especially from those base games red blue and yellow it was the main setup option that mewtwo relied on in those games and i could definitely see it using that going into this terror raid nasty plot is going to be something else that i could see it using uh, boosting its special attack by two stages every time it uses it psychic terrain gives it protection from prior moves like sucker punch that could be pretty detrimental shadow sneak as well as well as boosting up its own psychic type attacks recover is an option i think we can't discount that because with recover it could undo a lot of the work that you've kind of put out into the raid and make it that bit more difficult calm mind is kind of a combination of the amnesia boosting that special defense stat by two stages and the nasty plot by two stages whereas calm mind boosts your special defense and special attack by one stage every time you use it and also i'm just chucking in there disable as well because i feel like it is quite a signature mewtwo move option that it's got on there but honestly i could probably see something like like Ice Strike, Shadow Ball, Aurora Sphere, and then maybe something like Blizzard or Thunder on there.
and then amnesia nasty plot and maybe even the psychic terrain on there i don't think we're going to see recover it is a possibility though you never know what we're going to expect going into these raids and obviously disable is an option there as well it could be a little bit problematic especially if you're trying to set up or weaken the mewtwo and it disables one of your attacks and you can't utilize that and kind of run with what you're trying to do for the next few turns until that move is not disabled anymore so this is a basic overview of the mewtwo these are the options that I think probably more than likely that we'll see on it, but there are a few there that I do have question marks over. I think Aurora Sphere and that Fire Blast are one, but of course we'll wait and see when the raid goes live for what the options that this Mewtwo has in its arsenal. So alongside this Mewtwo 7 star terror raid event, the preparations for it, one of the extra additional bonuses for this event was getting a mystery gift for Mew. Now this was theorized in the data mines. We know when Mew goes in against that Mewtwo, there's that line of text, Mew goes up against a formidable four and it also gets a stat boost as well. So it's predominantly the Pokemon, the Game Freak and Pokemon want you to take into this Terror Raid event to kind of replicate that first movie battle, Mew versus Mewtwo. And because of those stat boosts that you do get, which we'll talk about later in this video, it does feel like probably one of the best options. And as I say, it is a mystery gift right now. So you can hop into your game and get yourself one right now. So all you need to do is come over to your Poker Portal and make sure that you are connected to the internet. Once you're connected to the internet, come down to your mystery gifts and get with code or password. It'll bring up this option here. So the code will be get your Mew. The O is a zero for this one. This event, will be running until the 18th of September. So when that Mewtwo seven star terror raid ends, you're gonna have that amount of time to grab yourself a Mew. And once you've put in the code, it'll just verify and bring up the option for you to get a Mew. The nice thing about these Mews though, is they will be level five, so they will need training up, but you will get a completely random terror type every time you get a Mew and it will have a respective move based on the terror type that the Mew is. So if you'll get a Dragon terror type Mew, you will get the move Dragon Pulse on there as well. So there's the Mew that we get collected and it'll be put into your party. If you've not got room in your party, it will be in your boxes. So there is a level five Mew and it is a flying terror type. So not the typing that we want for this one, um, but it will always come with the move Swift, Light Screen and Life Dew. And then like I say, it will have a move related to the terror typing here we've got air slash on our mew and it will have the classic ribbon that you can have and attach to it as well so with your mew obtained you can then train it up and i'm going to show you the finished product of the mew that i feel is going to give you the best opportunity going into these seven star terror raid events like i say mew is going to be one of those pokemon that's meant to go into this raid you're going to get a 1.5 times boost to your hp and then a 1.2 times boost to all of your other five stats given mew a massive buff going in against Mewtwo making it a really good option against this Pokemon so the Mew that I've trained up finally here is going to be a dark terror type Mew so if you've got a dark terror type Mew in your mystery gift bonus you don't really need to change anything but there is the spotlight terror events for Blissey running at the minute so getting dark terror shards is not going to be an issue at all it's going to be very quick the Mew is going to be obviously level 100. We have given it the Shell Bell item because it needs a line of recovery in this raid. With a move set of Amnesia, Nasty Plot, Acid Spray, and Dark Pulse. Synchronize is the ability here, and it has a modest nature with an EV spread. Take note of this 204 HP, 252 special defense and 52 in speed. Now that 52 in speed is gonna give you a raw stat when the Mew, you're looking at it like this, it's gonna be 249. But when you get that 20% boost in the raid, it's gonna give you the jump on Mewtwo, which is really important. So you're gonna be able to get an amnesia off before the Mewtwo can attack you. And in particular, if that Mewtwo starts the raid where it gets up a Calm Mind or a nasty plot before the raid actually begins, and it's gonna be hitting really hard and it might have access to some super effective attacks, in particular like Shadow Ball or even that Dark Pulse. So you wanna be able to get a boost up before you take any big attacks from the Mewtwo. It's gonna make setting up later in this game a lot easier. The basic premise of this is gonna be getting Amnesia up if you can at the start of the battle, of course, 
Then go for your acid sprays, go for three of those. It's gonna hit through the shield, so whether or not the Mewtwo shield goes up at the start of the battle, midway through, whenever, it doesn't really matter. Every time you use acid spray, you're gonna reduce the special defense on the Mewtwo by two stages every time you use it. Then you're gonna concentrate on boosting your own special attack up with Nasty Plot, boosting it up two times every time you use it. Try and use three of those that'll max out your special attack. And then you should be in a position after using three acid sprays where you can terrestrialize and you're playing off that dark terror typing as well, which will boost the dog pulse that you're relying on in this raid. And you're gonna be doing some big damage to the Mewtwo. It will be minus six special defense at this stage. You'll be plus six special attack and you'll be doing some incredible damage with the Mew, especially with those additional boosts that you get when you enter the raid event. Of course, if you do have the Mew that you've just got from the mystery gift, what you can do to train it up, all you're gonna need is some level up candies. So the first thing to do is just get whatever level up candies you've got. If you need some, do the Spotlight Terror Raid events at the moment. You wanna make sure that your Mew is set to level 100. And then we're gonna make sure that it has the move set that we've got above that we've just kind of covered. So we're gonna to wanna to get rid of the majority of moves here. So we go into remember moves here. The nice thing is it does have access to nasty plot as a learn or a level up move. So you can teach it nasty plot. You're not gonna need a TM for this one. And it also gets access to amnesia as well. That is another level up move that you're gonna have access to. Now the only two moves that you're gonna to need to get TMs for gonna be acid spray and that dog pulse. So the acid spray there that's the main one that we're going to need going into this raid that is a tm and dark pulse as well that is going to make up the entire move set that we're recommending for you to take in here and of course you're going to need the vitamins so i'll show you where you can get the shell belt in a moment but the vitamins you're going to come to montana vera or any other chancy supply store it's the quickest way to get the vitamins that you're going to need to ev the mewtwo so like i said you're going to need 20 of these or 21 if you've got the extra i'm going to need 21 but 20 will do then you're going to need 25 or 26 of the zincs i'll explain this in a moment then you're going to need five car bars as well so we'll just buy those and also when you're here make sure that you get a modest nature mint because the nature of the mew can be completely random so modest is the nature that we're going to want for this particular mew and once you've got all of these items then you can come to ev train the mew and all you're going to do is go for this and obviously because we do want 204 evs in the the muse hp you're going to want to use 20 hp ups and then you want to have the four health feathers if you don't have health feathers you're going to have to do the other evs first uh we're going to need 52 in speed evs so we're going to use five carbos and then we're going to use the two swift feathers on top of that and then we can max out our zincs as well, which will be our special defense, which we are maxing out. So we use all 25 of those. Then we'll come down to the clever feather and we'll use the two remaining that we can use here. And then we can top up that HP just to max out the rest of the EVs for this stat. Find our modest nature mint, give it to the Mew and that will change it. And it will be all EV'd, all leveled up with the move choices that we've got. So once you've EV'd it, the other thing to do is make sure that you've got bottle caps so you can hyper train this Mew as well because it will not have maximum IVs uh, when you receive it. I think it has three max IVs. So you can come over to your boxes, toggle your uh, plus button it will show you what evs are maxed out you're going to want to make sure that all the important uh, stats in the mew are maxed out so you can this is the normal view this is your stat view if you toggle the plus button on your controller you will be able to see best and what the other stats are looking like so you're going to have to come over and use bottle caps to max out the rest of these stats talk to this npc character here it'll ask you what you want to use do you want to use gold bottle caps or regular bottle caps and we're going to want to use regular bottle caps on our Mew here and we can see exactly what needs maxing out. Don't need to worry about the attack but the defense and the special attack are very important. The attack stat is not too important for this actual build so you can save yourself on a bottle cap by just maxing out the two and the rest of the stats are all going to be perfectly the same. So next step is to head over to Medali East and come to this restaurant here. 
This is where you battled Norman in your playthrough. This is where you're going to be able to change your terror type. So we'll speak to this restaurant or the chef in the restaurant here and you want to come down to your dog terror shots. You're going to need 50 of these to change your terror type on the Pokemon that you want. So you just click into this option and then we'll come over to our Mew that we're going to want to change. This is the flying terror type one. So we have hyper trained it, we've EV trained it, we've changed its nature and the final thing that we need to do after completing its moveset that we want is give it that dog terror typing as well and it's pretty much all there. All we need to do is get ourselves a shell bell item and to purchase the shell bell item you can come to Lavincia town which is right over here and you want to just come to the north part of the town and when you're at the Pokemon Center, you want to head over to this Deli Bird Presents store right here. And we are going to want to go in for battle items. That's what we need. And if you come down the list, you'll be able to find the Shell Bell item. I do have a number of them already, so I'm not going to buy another one. But that is where you buy the Shell Bell item from. You can then attach it to Mew. And there we go. Give it to the Mew. And it should be exactly the same as the Mew that we already prepared. But this is what your Mew is basically going to look like. We have that Dog Terror typing on it. Shell Bell item. EV spread, as we've mentioned before, with 252 in special defense, 204 in HP, and 52 in speed with a modest nature move set of amnesia nasty plot acid spray and dog pulse and that is all you're going to need for this mewtwo terror Raid event and i'm just going to show you how effective this mew can be going into this event because we have got the damage calculator open i have worked on this quite extensively over the last few days but you can see here these are going to be the stats when mew goes into the mewtwo terror Raid. so like i've said it got a, it got a 50 percent boost to its HP stat and then a 20% boost to all of its other five respected stats. So this is the stat points that Mew will have when it gets goes into this raid, gets that boost, and it's gonna be very strong against the Mewtwo. So against the Mewtwo, it doesn't have any speed investment. The only reason this would change is if the Mewtwo has a timid or a speed boosting nature, which I don't think it's gonna have. I think it's gonna have a modest boosting nature. So uh, it's speed neutrally going into this raid will hit a speed stat at level 100 of 296 that 52 speed investment in the evs that you're going to give Mew is going to give you a 297 speed stat meaning that you're going to creep it by one point always able to get a amnesia off or an acid spray off before it can move on that turn one so that's going to be really key i think for allowing this Mew to function and kind of negates the need for life due here if you can get that amnesia off turn one you're going to be able to take attacks a lot better it's going to give you a bit more room to kind of set up going into the raid and i feel like this ev spread in particular makes it a lot easier to kind of deal with some of the big threats coming out from the Mew. You can see the damage here, the Aurora Sphere not even going to be tickling you. You've got the side strike doing between 17 and 20%. That's because you're a bit weaker on that defensive side, of course. But the Shadow Ball going to be the big kind of threatening attack. And I guess we can also throw in Dark Pulse as well. But they'll both be doing around the same damage because they're both a base, the same base typing. But 22 to 26%. So just around a quarter of your health they're going to be doing each time it uses it but if you have got an amnesia off that first turn you can see that cuts it down dramatically 11 to 13 just because you have that speed boost that turn one you're going to be able to get that off before the Mewtwo can attack and if you get two amnesias off you're really not worried about what the Mewtwo is doing it allows you to fire off those acid sprays and then get your nasty plots up to the point where you're plus six three nasty plots and obviously with those acid sprays of Mewtwo will be down to minus six special defense you can then terastalize and you're going to be doing a lot of damage so you're going to be doing like between low 3000s and mid 3000s per hit with the dog pulse and of course you can stack that as well with an attack chair which is going to do significantly more meaning that you're going to be likely to be able to pick up two hit KO on the Mewtwo after you've got everything set up in this raid but of course this is all conjecture until we know exactly how this Mew 2 raid is going to interact. These are the basic ideas that you're going to be looking at when you go into the raid itself. Obviously, the Aurora Sphere does become a bit more of a threat if it has got access to that when you do trislize into that dog type. But you don't really need to worry about the size strike or any of the other options anymore on that Mew. It would only be the two moves that you'd be really looking out for the whole time you're going into this raid before you terrestrialize. Either be the Shadow Ball or that Dark Pulse if it's got access to that. When you do terrestrialize, it'll just be that Aurora Sphere. But hopefully by that point, you're always going to be outspeeding it. 
and you've also got those amnesias under your belt meaning that these attacks aren't really causing you too many issues at all and with the shell bell item there as well every time you do big damage to the Mewtwo you're going to be restoring your health meaning you've got a bit more longevity on the field and if you do get into any sticky situations with the Mew in particular then just remember you're going to have access to your heal cheers as well that you can utilize but that is the Mew this is the best build I personally think that you can prepare going into this Mewtwo raid makes sense and it takes all the numbers for kind of outspeeding it without a speed boosting nature which is the only thing I think that would mean they'd have to tweak it a little bit further going into this raid but otherwise I think you're going to be fine. Next Pokemon I am going to feature in this. Mewtwo is a very strong Pokemon and of course I'm going to mention Arceus as an option for this raid because it is a very good option. I understand not everyone has access to Arceus but if you do it is something that you can look at as an alternative to Mew. Probably not going to be as good, but it is definitely going to be an effective answer to the Mewtwo when you go into these raids and just give you a different option otherwise than the Mew. So we have given it the dog terror typing and that dread plate, which gives it the dog typing to begin with. It is going to be level 100 and it is going to have the move set of recover, calm mind, acid spray and judgment. Judgment obviously changes its type based on the plate that you're holding because you've got the dread plate. You're going to be hitting judgment is now a dog type attack. So hitting that Mewtwo for super effective damage. You're going to have immunity to any side type attacks coming out from the Mewtwo and you're really only going to have to be concerned if you see something like Aurora Sphere but even then with the EV investment that we've got on the Arceus and the fact that you've got Calm Mind you can kind of get around that potential damaging attack pretty easily once you start setting up in this raid. So the EV spread on this Arceus is 252 special defense. We're going to have 84 EVs in speed, a little bit like what we've got the investment in the Mew for. This 84 investment in speed means that Arceus is going to get the jump onto the Mewtwo every time you go into the raid, meaning you can get a calm mind off before the Mewtwo can attack. And then the rest of the EVs are going to be dumped into HP, which is 172. And their stats should look like this on the Arceus once you've trained it we have got a modest nature on it as well and it has got the multi-type ability which is its only ability but the basic premise of course like always is get a few calm mines up three calm mines probably going to be enough to start the raid off with then fire acid sprays off get three of those off it's going to take the Mewtwo special defense down to minus six then get the remaining three calm mines up it's going to give you a boost to your special defense special attack every time you use it recover when needed and then fire off those judgments and terrestrialize whenever you can to boost the damage and you'll be able to deal with the Mewtwo quite efficiently with this Arceus build of course all the builds that we'll be featuring in today's video are going to be linked down in the description below so you can take a look at them and have a look through them in your own time after the video now another option that I do think can effectively go into the Mewtwo raid pretty well I don't think it's going to be a fast method but I will say that it probably will be able to do it quite effectively is going to be Spiritomb. It's ghost and dark typing. Give it immunities to a lot of the attacks that are going to potentially come out from this Mewtwo that could be quite threatening. Namely the Psy Strike, the Psychic type attacks, of course, it's going to have the immunity to that. We'll have immunity to any fighting type attacks that could potentially be there on the Mewtwo. And it will be hit neutrally by any ghost type attacks as well. So that's a really nice thing, allowing Spiritomb room to kind of soak up attacks from the Mewtwo that are going to be predominantly neutral. Force Mewtwo into corners it probably doesn't want to go down and give you room to set up on your own end. We have the Shell Bell as the Held Item, level 100 once again, and the Dark Terror Typing on the Spiritomb. Just bear in mind when you do Terrasalize with the Spiritomb, you are going to gain a weakness to fighting. So to just keep that in mind when you do click that Terrasalize button if you do go down the road of using Spiritomb. But like I say, it's going to be a lot slower than some of the other options that we've got access to in this video. But it is available to everyone in Scholar and Violet, you don't need a mystery gift download for it and you don't need any of the exclusive legendary or mythical Pokemon to go into this event. The move set that we're going for with this Spirit Tomb, a filler move for the first one is going to be Foul Play. You can literally put anything in that slot. Then we've got Calm Mind, Snarl and Dog Pulse is going to be your main attacking option. Basic premise is going to be getting your Calm Minds up, boosting your special attack, special defense as much as you can up to six times and that will max out your special defense and special attack. Then rely on the Snarls as well to negate any boost to that Mewtwo special attack. If it does have access to Calm Mind itself, 
You can use Snarl to lar that special attack by one stage every time you use it. It will work through the screens as well. And you can also weaken the Mewtwo if it doesn't have a way to boost its special attack by just negating the damage that it can do from in a special attacking side of things. And then Dark Pulse is going to be the main attacking option. Going to hit the Mewtwo for super effective damage with an EV spread of 252 HP, 252 special defense and the rest put in special attack with a modest nature. The other thing to note as well is Mewtwo does get access to screens and this is the reason why we went for the hidden ability infiltrator on this Spiritomb because it ignores any screens that are set up from the Mewtwo. If it does get any barrier targets, barriers or substitutes like the description says, it will ignore those and you'll be doing the same consistent damage as if those screens weren't there. So that might come into effect with the Mewtwo. We'll see what its options are, but I did think it's more useful, more beneficial with the Spiritomb build than pressure than its normal ability, but you can go for that one if you don't have an ability patch to change the ability. It is something that might just give you a little bit of a helping hand though if you are taking Spiritomb into this raid. And the fourth and final option I'm going to suggest in this video, it is all dependent whether or not we see a fighting type attack on the Mewtwo or not and this is Tyranitar. If we see Aurora Sphere I don't think Tyranitar is going to be a good option at all but if we don't see any fighting type stabs on the Mewtwo I think Tyranitar genuinely could be one of the best options that we kind of have access to that again isn't a mystery gift, isn't a mythical Pokemon, isn't a special download that's only available to certain Pokemon. It's a Pokemon that's based in the games. Everyone pretty much has access to it. It is a version exclusive of course, but it is a lot easier to get hold of than a lot of the other Pokemon like Arceus and Co that might be being suggested for this raid. So for the build, it is gonna have the dark terror typing. It is gonna have the shell bell item. It needs a line of recovery. It is gonna be level 100. It is gonna have the move set of Snarl. That's gonna lower the special attack on the Mewtwo by one stage every time you use it. Screech is gonna lower the defense on the Mewtwo every time you use it by two stages. So you're gonna need to use three of those. Dragon Dance is a way for us to boost our attack and our speed stat up with Tyranitar every time you use it by one stage. So we can use that six times throughout the battle before we're maxed out. And then Crunch is gonna be our main damaging option in this raid. And Sandstream is the ability, obviously creating the Sandstorm on the field. And one of the nice effects of the Sandstorm is as long as it's in effect on the field, we do get a 1.5 boost to our special defense, making Tyranitar even stronger going into this raid. EV spread, we are going pretty simple with this one. An Adamant Nature with 252 HP, 252 special defense. So nothing jazzy there, but that is the build for the Tyranitar. And I'm going to just go over to the damage calculator a minute just to kind of show you how effective the Tyranitar can potentially be against this seven star Mewtwo. So you can see I've got the Tyranitar that we're talking about here and then up against the Mewtwo with its kind of expected EV spread and maxed out in defenses just to give it that like longevity here with the moveset that we kind of expected to have minus the Aurora Sphere, of course. If, like I say, if it does have that Aurora Sphere, you are not gonna have a good time. It's gonna be doing nearly 60% damage coming into the raid straight off the bat without any boosts at all. So imagine gets plus two with a nasty plot. It's gonna be knocking you out. You're gonna stand no chance. This is why I say don't come into this with Tito if it has got access to Aurora Sphere, of course. But if it doesn't, you're not gonna worry about any psychic type attacks because it's gonna be doing nothing. The Shadow Ball is gonna be doing negligible damage if it's got something like Blizzard going to have lower accuracy anyway it's still not going to be doing more than 20 percent to you with the ev investment that we've got fire blast of course is going to be resisting thunder is another option it does get access to and the very slim chance it does get access to earth power i can't really see it having access to earth power but you still take it pretty well you know you're taking like 27 to 32 percent damage from an earth power you just need to be careful if it has got access to that if it does start boosting up at all but basically the idea of this tyranitar set is going to be to get those screeches off so you get three screeches off at the start of the battle uh, Screech doesn't work through the shield, but you get the Mewtwo down to minus six defense. You use the Dragon Dances to boost your attack up so you get to plus six, and then you're in a position where you can Terrastalize as well. Bear in mind that you do have Snarl as well, so you can kind of mitigate any stat boost to the special attacking stat from the Mewtwo as well. But if you look at this, the, the damage here, the sheer damage, and you can combine this with an attack cheer as well, which is equivalent of a helping hand. You can see the damage that you're doing 6,000 to 7,000, nearly 8,000 damage. So by the time you've set up here, you've got some damage off. You're probably going to be one-shotting the Mewtwo 
Uh, in particular, if that shield isn't up, if the shield is up, you're still going to be doing a massive chunk and you're probably going to be breaking the shield. And then that next turn, the Tyranitar is going to be in an amazing position just to clean up this raid. So potentially, like I say, if it doesn't have access to Aurora Sphere the Mewtwo, I think the Tyranitar is going to be a really good shout for this raid. We'll all hinge on whether or not it has got access to that move option or not. If it does, then we have a bunch of other options here in the Mew the Arceus, the Spirit Tomb, and obviously the Mew that we created there just to kind of show you what we were doing with it. But like I say, I think the best Pokemon and the Pokemon designed to go into this raid is going to be the Mew. And I feel like it's going to be the one Pokemon with those stat boosts that you're going to get when you go into it. It's going to give you the best option against this raid. So that's the Pokemon I would suggest going in against. Of course, when the raid does go live, we will go live with the raid as well after an additional bit of testing. And we'll make sure to feature the best solo Pokemon going into this raid. Raid. but that is everything for today's video the Mewtwo raid not dropping for another two weeks now there's a lot of time to kind of get your preparations ready train your Mews up get that mystery gift of course don't forget to get it while it is running and then get ready for this Mewtwo seven star terror raid event to drop on that first of September I cannot wait for this event to drop I think this is probably going to be Maybe one of the hardest seven star terror raid events that we've had so far. But again, I think because of the preparation period that we've got, we've got the advantage with the Mew getting those stat buffs as well. I think it might not be as hard as what we all imagine it to be. But of course, we can all go online with our Mews and every single Mew in the raid will get the same additional boosts when they enter the battlefield. So it's going to make it a little bit easier for going up against the Mew twos especially online especially if everyone's got the acid sprays you're going to be spamming against the Mewtwo the nasty plotting and then doing really big damage making this raid probably quite easy online depending on the the options that you go into the raid with but I'd love to hear your opinions down below what are you planning on bringing to this Mewtwo seven star terror raid when it goes live next month and what moveset do you expect it to have like I've said I've outlined a few options here today I do have my reservations over the Aurora Sphere I'm kind of hoping it doesn't have it because i think it makes it a lot easier for some of these pokemon that have been suggested but if it does have it it's going to be no surprise to me it's a big powerful option and it gives it good coverage against dog type attacks so it makes complete sense for the mewtwo to have it but whether or not it has it, we'll have to wait and see for that event to go live. Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. If you found today's video useful, please drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.